An important example of an exponential function is the function of radioactive decay, which is given by this equation. If m0 is the initial mass, t is the time that has passed, and x is the half-life of the element, then after t time has passed, you will be left with m mass. So why don't we do an example? Let's say that your initial mass is equal to 32. Let's say that the time that has passed is 5 seconds. Oh, and this is in kilograms, by the way. And so time equals 5 seconds. And let's say that the half-life is 1 second. Then, after 5 seconds, well, let's do the equation, OK? So n is going to be equal to 32 kilograms multiplied by 1 half to the, well, 5 seconds over 1 second. That's just 5, right? So then the mass is going to be equal to 32. Well, what's 32? Well, that's just 2 to the 5, right? And 1 half to the 5. Well, you can see that this is just 1 kilogram. Yeah. So there so you have it, folks. There's a real life application of the exponential function. Now, here's an example from the field of economy. This is the compound interest function. Suppose that you go to the bank and you give them S money. And they tell you, after every month, we're going to take the money you have and we're going to multiply it by X. Then, what's the amount of money you're going to have after one year? Well, it's going to be S times X to the 12, because they're going to compound it 12 times. So, in this case, N was 12, but N can be any number really. So, why don't we do an example? Let's suppose that I go with my dad, and my dad tells me, if you give me $20, $20, after every week, I'm going to double your money, okay? And I go, yeah, that's great. So he tells me, you decide how much time you want to have. Let us see. Okay, so here's an example with real numbers. Let's suppose that my dad tells me, give me $10, and every month, I'm going to double your money until you decide you don't want it anymore. You just want your money back. So here, S would be $20, $10, and X, well, he's going to double it every time. So X is equal to 2. And now, let's suppose that I tell him, OK, Dad, I want you to do it four times. So then N is equal to 4. So now we just have to use our function. If we want to know how much money we're going to have at the end, so F is equal to S times x to the n. Now let's substitute this. We want to know what f is. So we know s is $10. Now x is 2. And n is 4. So then it's going to be 10 times 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4 is 16. So f is equal to 16 times 10, which is $116. And there you have it. That's a real example of an exponential function used in economy in this case. And normally, interest rates are much lower. But this is just an example to hit the point home. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, another example of um, the application of logarithmic functions to the real life is the Richter scale. Uh, Richter scale is a, uh, it's a magnitude scale. We produce any number to measure uh, the total amount of energy released by an earthquake. So, uh, in Richter scale, uh, you get a base, base 10 logarithmic scale in which the magnitude is defined as the logarithm of the radio of the amplitude of the waves. This means that uh, if, we, if we have an example here, so imagine that, well, in this case, our function would be m equals log base 10 of any amplitude of any wave. Okay, so in real life, uh, Richter scale 
takes, takes into account a lot of uh, other variables, but in this case we're going to make it just like this. So imagine that N, which is the, 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 the amplitude of the wave, it's equal to, I don't know, maybe... Okay, we got this. So if we substitute in this formula, we got M equals log 10 from... Okay, in this case, M equals to the magnitude in the Richter scale, okay? So imagine, if we solve all this, we got M equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the magnitude of this uh, earthquake in the Richter scale would be 5. Okay, so this is another example of how we can apply logarithmic functions to real life. They're not just numbers uh, we see in our math class. Yeah, thank you very much, guys.